greetings and welcome to Blue Gold. So let's not waste any time here, friends. Why is the sky blue? If our creator created the firmament, or the rikio, to separate the waters above the earth from the waters below the earth, can one see if this is correct? So let's start at the beginning. What we are told by today's scientists in the official heliocentric version, the sky is blue because blue light is scattered in all directions by the tiny molecules of air in Earth's atmosphere. Blue is scattered more than any other colour because it travels as short or smaller waves. This is why we see a blue sky most of the time. Okay, well, if that's the case, can we be shown another example of this phenomena called scattering blue light here taking place on Earth? And the answer is no. There is no other example of this. There is only the one officially mentioned. It's blue because of blue scattering light. That's it. And it can't be proved or replicated by any other scientific experiment known to man. So this can't be a correct definition of what we're actually seeing. Just like a supposed measuring of this curvature to mathematically account for an obleted spheroid, it's supposed to be there, but you and I can't measure it for ourselves. Nobody can, even with the supposed calculation for it. Just try it for yourself, as Neil Buchanan once said from the show Art Attack. Just try it yourself. Blew my mind as well when you actually see what was written in the head's head. But anyway, subliminals are everywhere. So they say, the sky is blue because the light from the sun gives it that colour from the blackness of outer space. Well, this has to be utter rubbish. Just like saying the earth is moving around the sun. It's not, folks. The sun moves around the earth just like the moon does. They're the lights of the sky. Sunlight and moonlight. <laughs> so getting back to the Rikio and the blue gold. First, it doesn't matter how much darkness of space there is behind the sun. It would not make it blue, would it? Think about this. If you were out on a prairie, for example, and it's a cloudy night, you would see blackness, right? Now you light a campfire. Do you see blue when you look away from the campfire? Of course not. You would still see the blackness. There is lesser light near the campfire, but when you look out further, you would see the blackness of night. So here we have NASA and all the other space agencies telling us that with the sun, it shows up the blackness of space as blue. Well, it does not, folks, does it? It would not matter how far, by the way, the cosmos would actually go. It would still show blackness. Even if it was a million miles or a million light years, it would still be blackness. And this is why it makes no real scientific sense. And of course, we know that there is no such thing as an actual cosmos. Indoctrinated by the masses with daily, I only said this to illustrate the point. So, if we were back on the Perari, the flat grasslands of the Earth, let's say in North America, to illustrate the point, sitting around a campfire in the evening, and you looked away towards the straight horizon, you'd be shocked and yell out to your friend, hey, look at that wall of blue. Seeing blue in this case would obviously come as a shock. Now, if your friend then said, well, this is what light does to the blackness of space, well, this is what NASA's telling us you'd realize that this is not the case, but somehow there is cognitive dissonance when it comes to what we see in the sky. We accept the blue of the sky when the sun is out, but we know it should not be blue when there is light at night on the earth, courtesy of the moon, her light for the night. So maybe friends, maybe, just maybe, we are actually looking up at the bottom of a huge amount of water, not scattering blue light as one is led to believe, because the sun is actually illuminating the water and there is gonna be the reflection of blue. So way back in the origin of Genesis or genes is, when the creator describes the creation of the heavens and the earth, it is literal. You, it's literal by the context it's in. When it said that it's divided, or he divided the waters from the water, it's divided. Sar and Kisar, 
the upper and lower firmaments, and the earthland came out of the water on the third day. It rests upon the very seas. So we all know that there is water beneath, so why don't we believe that there is thus water above? Probably because people would expect then the water to fall down if it were, you know, the chicken little effect. And we all know of the worldwide story of the Great Deluge, which we will certainly do an upload on. So if there is a firmament, which we are told there is, this is what would hold the waters above and hence why the water does not fall down. It's kept up by a divine divided wall or a molten looking glass. And maybe the Van Allen radiation belts from the Helio Club are just another way to secretly show you the truth without really letting you in. Thus comes to mind, we are looking, or maybe we are looking, at the bottom of a huge swimming pool Except this swimming pool, friends, is not crystal clear water, is it? It's probably salt water, like our seas or oceans, which has minerals in it. So when you drive along the beach and you look out and you see different shades of blue, this you're not, ex you're not surprised, you expect to see it. Even when the water is that close to shore, it's got algae in it, there's a storm out at sea, it's heavily polluted, and we even have seas that do not mix. Otherwise, some shade of blue is the colour we expect to see. <coughs> Excuse me. We are told that it's darkness, which is black, if you were outside at night. And it was really, really, and if it was a really, really dark night, and you look down at a swimming pool with no lights on it, of course, do you see the blue of the water? No, you do not. So at night time, if you were on the beach, would you normally see the blue that you would normally see? Well, no. So when the sun arrives at first light, depending where you are on the plane, seasonal time, etc., etc., you'd start to see the color blue. Well, this is much like what we see during the day, looking up at the blue sky. As you all know, most of the water on the earth, or under the earth, is salt, with other minerals in it too, of course, and since the, it came from the same waters at the time that was divided at the time of creation, well, the part that's above it would obviously be of a sodium chloride variety too, and naturally free from any man-made pollution. It's the minerals in the water and certain metals are of their alloys that actually provide a blue colouring matter along with the light of the sun that gives it the blue to our eyes. As above, so below. I'm sure you've heard all that, that saying before. There are many cases of what happens on a small or micro level happens that happens on a large or macro level apart from evolution. Isn't that funny? Now with that in mind, for Nick, when a natural human baby is still in the womb, it is actually surrounded by an amniotic fluid, which has salt in it, doesn't it? This fluid surrounds and protects the baby, right? Could it be that our omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent creator surrounds us with that kind of fluid in order to protect us from above? This eternal divine substance some of us already know that there is a border to earth on the horizontal. So subsequently, this would be the border for the vertical, the firmament, the rikio. We have the seas, and we are told of the deep under the earth. Then we have this water that is above the firmament, all this being salt and other minerals as it protects us and the earth land below. Now interpretate it. From Homer's Odyssey, it's very self, and he knew the Earth was flat, folks, as Homer's description of the flat disk cosmography is actually on the shield of Achilles with an encirculating ocean. And he says, life is in the water. You are birthed, birthed, here, from water, 
on to this flat plain earth made up of 60 to 70% water and thus need a fresh amount, an unlimited amount, to thrive and survive properly. Water is your life. And if you would only listen to your heart, folks, it's an anagram for Earth for a very good reason. It rests upon the blue gold, just like you and I do. Try not to waste your time imagining a digital one. Water always seeks to find its own level, because water is always level. No matter what configuration you pour water into, it's going to be level, isn't it? I'm actually telling and saying this to you, looking at my cup of coffee. Excuse me for slurping. It's an irrefutable physical reality proof that it can be replicated by absolutely anybody. Water can't be anything else but flat and can never be convex. Try and prove me wrong. There is no convexity to water. All oceans and seas, lakes are level. Obviously there are waves and aggressive waters. We're not talking semantics, friends. Even Parallax believed himself, and I do too, that because he had actually proved scientifically the levelness of water being horizontal, that one day this would ultimately lead to the death of heliocentricity. Of course it hasn't yet. The space movie continues daily. However, all the science facts of nature still remain, and the Earth is flat. Most will stay ignorant to this fact that water will always find its own level. Yet it's so apparent from the water in the sink that I washed in this morning, or you did, to the water in the bathtub that I will run later on in the evening. Just look at it. The cup of coffee I'm drinking, it's delicious and very level. From the ducks or the coots ponds near where I actually work, to the magnificent bowling green of the broad Atlantic or the Pacific, the water will never show any convexity to it. Just be perfectly horizontal and sea level. The Earthland was created from the water and sits above it. Are you on the level? On the other side of the screen? You can't spell horizontal without horizon, can you? And boy, that's on the level. I even ask your spirit level why it's sometimes filled with water. And I bet that will level with you too. <laughs> the earth land rests upon the waters. This is what causes the tides really, friends. It's the gentle and gradual rise and fall of the earth on the bosom of the mighty deep and the currents that behold within them. There are no tides on any inland sea or lake, so the moon does not attract either the earth or the water to cause the tides. This is a helio lie. The fact that the basin of the lakes or inland seas are on the earth which rests upon the waters of the very deep and shows that no tides are possible, as the waters of the lakes together with the earth rise and fall, and thus the tides at the coasts are caused. There are no tides on waters unconnected with the seas, yet all rivers run into the sea, don't they? Thomas Winship, you are a legend to us all. Now in Tahiti, where throughout the year, the waters uniformly commence ebbing at noon and midnight and flow about sunset and daybreak, they actually use the term tu re rapo, which actually means to express high water and midnight. Try actually telling the people this helio rubbish. They know, like you do now folks, it's the gentle and gradual rise and fall of the earth on the bosom of the mighty deep that causes the tides. And just to mention, you can even tell what kind of tide can be expected by the phase of the moon. The tide keeper she is also known as. The moon, just like the sun and water, are all utterly astonishing, with so much to find out and realize about their sciences here. Maybe you have been called a lunatic before. I know I have. But you cannot eliminate the essence of truth. You may break, you may ruin the vases you will, but the scent of the roses will hang around it still. If there is water above us, we have the water below us. 
Yet through the Earthland itself, humans have only managed to dig eight miles or so down directly into the Earth using the best diamond drilling companies of the plane and also Black Op Earth submarine drillers. However, the waters below also hide a very, very special something. Something you may just find even more astonishing. And this is from the makers of the animal planet and what they found at the Tihu or in the deep, deep depths of the blue gold. Probably the 1990s. Redmine degree is one of a handful of people to ever see it in person. Without a doubt, one of the most amazing things that I have ever seen at the bottom of the ocean. It was while filming for Blue Planet in the Gulf of Mexico. I noticed there's something out in the distance. Couldn't tell exactly what, but it looked like a dark band. Sar and Kisar, the upper and lower firmaments, as above, so below. Thank you for your precious time with me today, if you did stay till the end. Here is your luck, and I will see you soon. Keep safe, and toasty flat folks. I'll see you soon.